Well, hello and welcome back, or welcome to those of you tuning in for the first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday with episodes of Hope, Help, and Health. You can expect guests to give us great information and insight in the world of business, health, and personal experience, all presented to you as a way to find a Hope Revealed. As a person myself who's been battling stage four cancer, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring hope as well as help. And that can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to locate, and information from emails and messages I receive from you, our followers. And you can always email us here at community at godsgotthis.love for questions, comments, or content. On today's episode, we're going to dive deep into life and a hope revealed moment through the life of a very special guest. Welcome to Hope Revealed. My name is Pradeep Sangha. I'm widely known as the strategist for men in business. And typically that's what I do is I help men in business not only grow their business and grow their sales and grow their marketing and, and get them to that revenue goal, but I also help them in their life. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. I'm super excited to be able to share an incredible guest with you today that you're gonna absolutely love. He's doing some stuff that is really near and dear to my heart and I believe will be something very powerful to a lot of you that are kind of looking for some transition um, or you know, on the flip side of that even and kind of wondering, did I make a mistake? Did I screw up? Whatever, right? So you're gonna have fun. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode of Hope Revealed. So thank you so much for being with us today. And you say your name so fast, because it's so easy for you, but it's P-U-R-D-E-E-P, -E -E Pradeep. Yep, you bet. P Pradeep, there you go. So just for all you other out there going, how do you say that? Is that Pradeep? <laughs> Pradeep? It's Pradeep, Pradeep. You say it so fast, Pradeep, so go. <laughs> So what's I'm used your to it. So I mean, you're obviously, obviously, you're Caucasian. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have an Indian background. My parents immigrated from India in the in the 70s, and I was born on, in a small town in Canada called Kelowna, British Columbia. I was born literally because I spent my early years. I was born and raised on an orchard. So, really. Yeah. Yeah. We have. We still to this day, my brother and I have it. We have an apple and we have a cherry orchard. Oh, amazing! So do yeah, you like so do like. Do you produce apples for farms or for, I mean, for, for stores and stuff? Or do you do apple juice and cherry juice or what do you do? Yeah, well, you could say almost all of the above. Our apples are sold in, in the stores and also made for, uh, for juice as well. So, yeah, I love it. I actually just got back. I was uh, back there because it's on the other side of the country. I was there for almost two weeks during uh, harvest season. So we just finished that up. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's fun. So you've been doing that all, just pretty much your whole life then? Yeah, you know what, as, as long as I can remember, literally my parents, when they came from India, they, they would be picking apples and they would have my brother and I in an apple bin if they didn't have anybody to take care of us. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a different upbringing, that's for sure. That's so amazing. So obviously you, you went on down the road. We're going to come back to all that kind of stuff. I mean, they'll be a full circle. So you went on yeah. past the orchard one day and did your own thing. <laughs> um, but, you know, while you're at the orchard, I'm just thinking like, what made you think like, I don't want to be here on an apple orchard anymore. You come from a very strong tradition family. Tradition is very, very big and very important in, in, yeah. your, in your family, I'm sure. And for you to say, I'm not going to do the apple orchard. I'm going to go do this thing over here. What was that like and with mom and dad, with you, with all that moment in your life right then? How did that, how'd that go down? Well, it was actually quite the opposite because my parents said, hey, pretty, we don't want you to struggle like we struggled. We want you to get an education. We want you to get a job so you're not out here sweating your butt out in you know, 40 degrees Celsius heat, you know, working 12, 14, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. We want you to go a different path. And I have to give all the credit to my parents because they literally worked their butts off for my brother and I. So they, they kind of pushed me down the other road. It was, it's interesting because as a, you know, as a first generation Indian, the typical thing that you're supposed to be is a doctor, right? A lawyer or an engineer. <laughs> That's, those were the chosen paths. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I kind of disappointed them because I didn't take any of those. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and what, a, what a great testament to your, to your family, your mom and dad, that um, you know, I'm a parent, you're a parent too, right? Yeah, so yeah. the love that we have for our kids. And I'm not saying that tradition is bad because a lot of families are very, very focused on tradition and, and uh, you would have to take over the family business. But in this case, uh, they worked their tails off to give you whatever you wanted which yeah. was 
and is absolutely amazing. And at the end of the day, you're still back doing the orchard stuff too. So that's yeah. really good. You know? So it, it's even, I bet you it's a win-win for mom and dad to see all that kind of stuff happening in your life. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting because, um, you know, I, I've always considered myself a farm boy. I love being on the farm. It's a different environment, right? You don't have the same stresses that you have uh, in the corporate world or in the bi traditional business world. But, you know, my mom is still around. My dad's not. Actually, last year, my dad passed away. Um, he was 64 and a half. You know, his milestone was to hit 65. And uh, I'm a big believer in, uh, you could say, everything happens for a reason. And just all roads kind of pointed him towards that. He passed away on the orchard. He was wow. by himself. It was, it's a really interesting oh. story. Um, but I can say that, you know, he's one of the reasons, not only in terms of who I am today as a man, but why I do what I do. And so that him passing, I had two options. I could say, okay, you know, this is, it had, it had obviously a massive impact on our family because it was so sudden. Yeah. But it was almost like a sign to say, pretty move forward with the direction that you're going in because as awesome as my dad was, and he was, you know, such a, you could say he was an ex-police officer. He walked into a room and he had total presence, right? We talk about those guys that just walk in, you're like, okay, he's in the room, yeah. but he was the most gentlest guy, the most loving guy I know, but he also suffered from alcoholism. And so he dealt with this, this his whole life, which really held him back. And he, although he had a lot of stuff, he wasn't truly fulfilled. Mm. And uh, for me, I see a lot of guys suffering, not necessarily with alcoholism, but just with stuff in their life where they don't feel fulfilled. Right. And, and I always think of my dad. And I always think of what would my dad's life have been like if he had a mentor or a coach to really guide him along the way. Oh, so that's what, that's what pushes me today. Yeah, I could totally, I could totally see that. Um, and obviously, you know, we, we talked about some of the things like you did in the future. So we'll just go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. I mean, yeah. you did leave the apple orchard and you went off into the corporate world um, and you chased some things out there for a while yeah. and you were making some good money. Yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't modeling because you're a really ugly guy. So there's no way that you could possibly <laughs> have made, made it in modeling out there. Sorry, ladies. Okay, so he's... A, you're an extremely good looking guy. They got the whole dimple thing going on, a little square jawline. I'm sure that helped out a little bit, right? Little things like that. Uh, so you yeah, go from into, that, into the corporate world, right? And, and then while you're in the corporate world, what was that like? Where did you go from the apple orchard to corporate world? How did that happen? And what did you start doing? Yeah, well, it was interesting. So I literally just, I, I was in the banking sector. So I, I literally started from the bottom, kind of worked my way up. I led pretty much every division you could think of, like marketing operations, human resources, at a multi-billion dollar organization. My goal was to be a CEO of a major corporation. And so I, I worked my way up. I'm, you know, from the work ethic that I got in the orchard, you could say I, I literally outpaced everybody else. So I just kind of moved forward. And, and at that stage in life, I thought I had it all, right? I had pretty much everything. I was traveling the world. Uh, I had a beautiful wife, a young kid, status. Uh, I had, you know, the, the, the card, you know, I can go out and expense things. And so everything kind of looked cool. I was going to sporting events, but uh, things just weren't right inside me. You could say that, uh, you know, I, 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 sh I do share this openly, but because my wife and I have a strong relationship, but my wife and I at that time were on the verge of divorce towards the tail end. And I was living a life it that I... All the stress and the problems and the issues you're going through just was like a turmoil at, at home as well. Yeah, it wasn't even really with work. It was just like, I, I, I didn't feel like I was being myself. Mm. I felt like I just was living this, I was just going through the motions, you could say, just waking up day in and day out, doing the same old stuff over and over again. Yeah. And I just had to question myself, like, is this really the life that I want to live forever? Because I'm only going to get one shot at this. Right, right. And so that was really what happened. And, and, and it takes me back to a time, at the moment that actually was an eye opener for me was, something just flashed back and at the age of seven or eight i remember playing on our driveway with hot wheels and i remember that moment where i was thinking i was i don't know why i would have this thought at seven or eight but i was thinking i want to be a ceo of a company that does good things for people like you thought the word ceo yeah like it was like the boss right it was like the boss the ceo i don't know what it was yeah it was the weirdest wow. thing and so uh, i must have picked up on it somewhere but that's what I said. And I said, am I actually doing that? Yeah, I'm, I'm an executive, but am I, you know, I looked around and actually, it was interesting because I went to, uh, to work and I sat around the table with some of the other executives and it was a great organization, but I just looked and I said, oh my God, like some of these people are just talking out of their butt. 
and we're and, and, and we're just we're talking about all these things that we have in terms of corporate values and how we're doing the best for our clients and all this stuff and I said half of it's just hogwash you know no one's really living up to it and so I just I literally quit I walked into work one day after I spoke to my wife I said I'm gonna do this and she looked at me she said are you are you sure like are you positive because what you're doing is not just your everyday decision this is so wait a minute. You. So you, that's the first conversation or do you have some bedtime talk like about this before a few times no and then you finally came home and said i did it today or did you just like hey guess what i did today honey no actually sorry it was two days before i was going to so i said honey i'm gonna quit and then she just basically said <laughs> so that's right, when you got divorced right then <laughs> yeah that, that should have been it right there <laughs> that should have been that's great. So, yeah. And so literally I just walked into work and I quit and people thought I was nuts. They thought I had gotten into an accident or hurt or something's wrong with your brain, man. Are yeah. you crazy? <laughs> yeah. And even people thought, even when I left, because, you know, it gave me You're a big, just kidding, right? You're coming back to work on Monday. Right? No, yeah. No, yeah, exactly. But it was interesting. Yeah. I'm going to the apple orchard. <laughs> yeah, I'm gone. Right. But it, it was just a, a huge eye opener because I thought, you know, I didn't know how the process was going to go, but I didn't expect it to to go the way I thought, because the moment I said that it was almost like I had betrayed them. And so I was just like, wow, like, you know, talk about corporate loyalty and stuff. There is none. They're, ah, they're right back at you. Yeah. So I basically made that decision. I just I said, know that about the corporate world. Sorry, yeah. corporate world, but. <laughs> yeah. And I basically said, you know what, this is my last day. Typically it would have been two weeks or a month. I would have, you know, worked a couple of months just to say, okay, I'm giving you some notice, but it was literally the day that I told them and the day that I walked out with my Wait my a minute. Box. You didn't even give like a 30 day notice. No. You're like, I'm out. Yeah. And it was, out? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was, and it was interesting because people thought I got fired. Right. They said they're people after work. They're like, what happened? What's going on? And, and I just basically said, I made this decision to move forward. And uh, I, I never looked back because it was the best decision I, I could make because I think a lot of this, and this is a lot of the work that I'm sure you do as well, is, uh, is helping people live a life that they're happy to live. Mm, yeah. And, and that's the thing. And I think there's so much societal pressure these days. And we talk about social media and all this other stuff where people feel like they have to conform to a certain way. They have to make a certain amount of money. They have to have a certain level of success. Yet they're miserable at home. And yet they're miserable in a relationship. And then their kids grow up miserable. And so it's just Let's this. Let's all be miserable together. Isn't this great? Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, that's, that's kind of where it is. And it, I'm, I'm so thankful because not that it's been the easiest road, but doors have opened up. And I think it's when you have good intentions, I think paths are just opened up for you. Wow. So, okay. Whew, mind blows. That's just a big deal right here. So let's back up a little bit. Yeah. You went to college because yeah, mom and dad worked for you to go to college. You got yeah, to I went. What was your degree and where did you go? Oh, well, I've, I've, uh, you could say acad academia was a big part of my life. So I've been to, I don't know, maybe five or six different Holy smokes. business schools. I've been to MIT. I've been to Stanford. I've I got my MBA. I've, so you could say from an academic perspective, I've kind of been there, done that. Um, and so that's kind of on the back burner for me, though, because I think everything that I learned in the real life is what has really brought me to where I am today. So you're telling me that MIT, Stanford, all that kind of stuff, although they're great, great institutions and <laughs> offer great programs for incredible people that you don't really need it to succeed in life. No, you don't. Oh, that, no, you can't say that. You know yeah, you yeah, exactly. Oh. Right? You, you, yeah. you don't. Yeah, you get some great schools. You it's learn a new some world, cool man. Stuff. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a different world. If we took yeah. it, turned back 50 years ago, college for sure. Yeah. But uh, today, with the age of social media and, and internet stuff, unfortunately, it's just the reality. Um, college education, there's people out there making tons more money. I know some 21-year-old millionaires. Yeah. Um, from the internet didn't they didn't even go to college finished high school thank god <laughs> so anyway i mean this this show's obviously not about bashing college i think college is great i've gone yeah. uh, my wife's gone kids are gonna go um but you know it's not the only thing in the world there's there's a lot to it so you went to some phenomenal phenomenal schools you got a, a great education no wonder they were worried about your leaving because you're you're bringing a lot to the table at, yeah. at the place you're working for you're a brilliant man and then you you leave there um, so how long has it been since leaving the corporate world, going back home to your wife and saying, hey, guess what, honey? We're going to go pick some apples tomorrow. Yeah, four years. It's been four years. Yeah. What's that been like for four years now? What's happened in the four years? 
Wow. Uh, well, you could say I have my uh, my consulting and my coaching firm. It's been phenomenal. I've uh, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I have an amazing lifestyle that is way worth more than what I was doing back then. And I'm, I get to do what I, what I want to do. And for me, it's really a mission more than anything. It's a movement because the work that I do, um, I, I feel, and I know, because I've seen the results, really changes people's lives. Yeah. And so that is the most important thing. I didn't realize, you know, one of the big things that happened to me when I came out of the corporate world is the first thing I said was, oh, crap. Like, what do I do now? It just so happens that my passion, I was a personal trainer at 17. I love helping people, right? That's always been my passion. I've always coached people uh, since I was 17. And so I was coaching people when I was an executive in terms of how to grow their business. And, I, and when I left, I basically said, maybe I'll try this full time. And one door just kind of opened uh, another. And then I've just narrowed it down and really specifically focused on men because there's a huge need. There's not very much um, many resources out there. And well, tell me, explain me that. Let's unpack that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of resources. I'm not arguing the point. Um, I just think that there's not a lot of really good ones. I mean, there's some yeah. good stuff, that, a lot yeah. of stuff out there. And there's honestly, there's a lot of places that, out there just that they just want your money. So yep. they create programs designed to to bring in money. It's like, go, oh, I won't even say this. I'll bash the whole industry if I say that. It's like going to, <laughs> it's like going to a place that you go to for something to help you feel better. But the only thing you do is you pay them for the service that day. It makes you feel really good. But then it starts to get worse again in a couple of days. But they make an appointment with you so you can come back the next week and keep doing it over and yeah. over and yeah. over, and over again. Instead of just going get to the doctor and getting fixed. Yeah. And I call it the pump and dump, right? They, they pump you up and then they dump you. So well, I'm, a firm, I'm a firm believer in systems. I'm a firm believer in processes. I'm a firm believer in doing the work and getting the action. And my whole model in terms of how I work is really teaching a man to fish, right? And not catching the fish for him. Because my whole purpose is I just want to, here you go. Here's the skills that you need. Here's the systems that you need to put in place. And you go live your life. I don't want you, you know, stuck on me. That's not my philosophy because that's, I just, people, there's too much of that out there. And I think you're yeah. absolutely right. There's resources out there, but not the right resources. Right. So then you were driven to create something. I'm wondering because you had a, you had a good home life. Sounds like, yeah. uh, I know you probably had some moments with your dad. Some of that wasn't probably fun at home, Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like on the, on the grand scheme of things, you had a pretty good home life. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you're distraught from, you know, horrible scenario as a kid and, you were going to run away from home and start your own life, do your own thing. Right. And then you went to the best colleges in the world. And then you had one of the best jobs in the world. Right. <laughs> and then you leave that to go back to one of the best women in the world. Right. And yeah. then uh, all this is gone. Um, so what made you want to start something like you are specifically, even for men? Uh, but what made you want to create something like that for people that are so distraught, down and out, um, desperate, lost, broken, right? What made you think like, that's what I want to do when you come from really happy, joyful, good stuff? Um, I can say it's probably since uh, childhood. So my parents were very giving people. They were very, they've always helped people ever since. Like my parents, when they came from India, they were making next to nothing and they were still sending money back home to India to, to help their family members. So giving was always a part of our life. And I loved nature. So animals and I, I've always seen, um, you could say, uh, the empathetic side of life. But you know, one of the biggest moments that changed my life in terms of really pushing that avenue was when I went to India in 2006. I spent a month there and I saw the poverty. I saw the Was that one of the first times there? Uh, well, I went a lot when I was, uh, I went a few times when I was younger, but it was over, I hadn't been back for 20, 20 so years. For example. Deal, then. This is a big yeah. Idea. Yeah, big. As, as an adult, I was going back there and I spent a month there and I was just, I was just so blown back. See, seeing kids with no limbs crawling around on their torsos, uh, begging, you know, with all the things that we took for granted. And I promised myself, so I, I basically said, God, you know what? I, I'm not going to take things for granted now. You know, you've opened up my eyes here. I've seen things from a different perspective. I always appreciated things before, but this was a completely different level. And I just basically said, um, you know, I just want to help people. I, that's, that's basically it. I think that's, I think if all of us in the world just help one person and how, you know, that in itself could have a massive impact. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, so 
you know, you, you brought up a moment then back when you were at the corporate world and you had been wrestling with, with the thoughts of uh, really just not feeling satisfied, uh, feeling like you said, not, not able to be yourself, you said. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what was, what was that moment for you exactly that uh, name of the show is Hope Revealed, right? So it's about that spark, that moment, that thing that says, this is it, you can do this. What was that, that moment that got you to walk into that office and say, hey, Bob, or whoever was going to be crazy, yeah. this is Bob, be awesome. Hey, Bob, um, today's my last day. What, yeah, what you know, was that? You know, it was probably, it was talking to a friend. Ah, and, relationship, amazing. Yeah, it, it was a friend, I think, what he said. And, and the, interesting enough, I hadn't seen him for a few years, and him and I didn't really connect all that often. Um, and we just ran into, uh, you know, at a random event, and I was just talking to him. And it was interesting because I think he was at a point in his life where he needed or wanted some significant changes and I wanted it. And we just opened up and we had some really deep conversations. We talked about e each other and some of uh, even our own hurdles. And he basically said, man, he's like, you can do this. And he basically said, you're a smart dude. He's like, you got this. And that in itself, just one person having that faith, man, I think that is what gave it to me because I, I don't know if I would have. Hadn't I, hadn't I had that encouragement? That is really awesome. Man. That's the power of relationships. And what if he was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be at his house right now. You're like, screwed, Let's buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to the apple orchard. But I think that was, that's so phenomenal, brother, that you were able to, uh, to hear that, one, especially when you, you didn't have to necessarily. I mean, there was no reason for you to leave the job you were at. Yeah. You could have suffered it and sucked it up because you came from a family where your parents were doing, they sucked it up. They did yeah. whatever they had to do to make it work. So you could suck it up and make it work too because you were doing well and making good money too. So why quit that? That'd be stupid, right? Why yeah. do that just so you can be a coach? Oh my Lord. So, <laughs> but, yeah, it, but it was the right thing and many doors opened for you as a result. Um, I don't think, now tell me if I'm, I'm wrong, but I don't think that probably happened instantly you probably didn't have like a bunch of clients the next day and started coaching and and making good money and now you don't have to worry about health care and insurance and stuff like that right did it take a little bit of time or did it happen fast or what happened for you there hey, you know it's interesting so i'll tell you a story so the, one of the first things that i said was okay so i'm in this space now this is what i'm gonna do i i know marketing i've led a marketing division but digital marketing when it comes to this specific area i want to know who's out there and i want to know who's the best at it and there was 7,324 people on one niche. You're like, no. no. Yeah, but and it's interesting because I found one of the best ones and I said, okay, I'm going to learn from, the, from this person. So interesting enough, I actually started following this person. I started learning from this person, took, took some of the programs and the opportunity came to actually sit with this individual in a very intimate group setting, just five of us, um, for a weekend at a X price. It was freaking expensive, but you had to be making X amount of money. And I said, well, I'm not making that amount of money. I'm just going to apply for the hell of it, right? And so I th what had happened was he had someone new on his team that was filtering the applications or whatever. And I didn't understand that requirement or whatever it was, but it allowed me in. You got in. <laughs> so first of all, you know, two things went through my mind. I was like, what the F? Like, me, I, first of all, I didn't expect this. And now if I'm going to do this, I have to fork out this amount of money. And the second thing, because these, these digital it's marketing, a lot of money, like, crap, I got in, honey. Where are yeah. we gonna come up with the money for this? <laughs> and so, and what so the, the fruit tree. What the fruit yeah, tree? Yeah, yeah. That was the F, folks. What the fruit tree? Love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love Hashtag that. Hashtag what the fruit tree. <laughs> <laughs> make search for that, brother. I'm telling you, you're gonna make a lot of yeah, money. I love it. <laughs> uh, and so uh, then the other thing, you know, the other part to me, and I and I think this is a huge thing is. Um, just un opening up every opportunity you can un or turning every rock over because when you turn every rock over, you have no excuses. You can't look back and say, I didn't do it. So I basically said, I'm going to do this. So interestingly enough, I show up and you know, they, they pick me up in a private car. I drive up and it's this, this private estate. And I look, I said, wow, this is an amazing house. And the driver's like, that's, that's uh, the guest house, dude. That's the and guest I'm, house. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> so we pull into the house, you know, there's, saying, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. And so let's just say, you know, there's, there's the fancy cars up front. It looked like this literally a Spanish drug Lord's mansion. And I, and I basically said, okay, I'm, I'm at the wrong place. I'm at the wrong yeah. place. 
And interestingly enough, the person that was sitting with me on the ride, you know, she's making, I think it was three and a half million dollars a year. And I was just like, holy crap. Like, like, yeah, who, I got that. No problem. Yeah. What, did, yeah, what did I get myself I into? I can't how much I'm making. I can't tell you, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it was interesting because I spent, I was, you could say I was the most quiet one out of the group. Um, but well, at the end. Let them know that you had to sell like three dogs and an apple tree to get there, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it was just. So interestingly enough, at the end of the two days, uh, what ended up happening, and this is what really turned everything around for me and gave me a different perspective, was he, he said, Pretty, I need to chat with you. Here's what's going to happen. And he's like, I know you have a specific skill. I want to hire you. This is how much you're going to pay you. Um, and I need you to work with my team. This and was the my lead guy or this was the guy who was showing you around the place to come in? No, this was the lead guy. This is the head and honcho. Yeah, so I basically drug said, lord. You, yeah, basically you a drug dealer. This is this is the best podcast I've ever done in my life. I yeah. can't believe it. We broke the story. <laughs> so interesting enough, he basically said it was he said he called his he called his uh his team up and said, Can you cut this guy a check? And I just said, Are you serious? You're gonna pay me this amount of money to do now? this? Uh, and you're going to cut me a check right away. Like I just basically, it was one of those moments where it's like, Oh, you know, the, the, yeah. the sun is shining. I was just like, what? But that gave me the, that really gave me the impetus, the hope. And basically to say anything is possible. You can do this. That really set the stage for me. You can say, because not that every instance was like that, but just that one thing, you know, it, it, people out there need help. Yeah. And Every, there's a need for every single thing for someone that's looking to do something different. There is a need out there. And that just opened it up for me because one of the biggest challenges I had, even though I knew this stuff, right? This is the stuff I coach on. This is stuff I've learned for years is, you know, nothing needs to change except for your own story. Before that I was telling my story, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? You know, do I have the skills? Cause I was taking a look at guys like Gary V and Grant Cardone and they have all these followers and yeah. how am I going to build myself? You just cuss and, more. Grant Cardone cussing his head off. Yeah, exactly, right? Just start cussing and become a millionaire. Yeah, it, if only it was what's that the, easy, that'd be awesome. What's the fruit tree. <laughs> <laughs> and so I really had to change my story because I was I was just not living the right story. Um, and I basically said, "Hey, look, now I'm going to empower myself. I'm going to tell myself, hey, look, I I have the skills. People out there need the help. Nothing else changed. My skills didn't change. Nothing factually changed except for how I was talking to myself. Mindset and yeah, and that itself just opened up the door. So it's it hasn't been easy after that. There's been ups and downs and, and big challenges, but I can say, you know what, I, things have been great now. And um, the work that I'm doing now is is just, I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. How long ago has it been since the man wrote you the big check? Was that four years ago? Four years, yeah, roughly, yeah. And then that job's over now? You've been, did that one? Yeah. Had Okay. But it was a great yeah. experience, obviously. And oh, brilliant. Yeah. It was, it was, it kind of set the stage, right? Yeah. How amazing. What's really interesting parallel to me in this story is that you took a moment to make a decision. You walked into your boss's office and immediately you said, I'm done. I'm doing this. I'm over. No notice. Walked in, went home that night. Boom. Done. Did it. Yep. Your, your moment, you go to the drug lord's house <laughs> there, and the guy says i want you now boom done here got it yeah and it's amazing how your challenge right and your your um your fight became your reward yeah it was the same thing that yeah. just propelled you into what you're doing now which is amazing exactly so, there's probably some folks today that are listening and watching uh the podcast and, and watching it on linkedin and on youtube today that are, I know for a fact, that are thinking, yeah, right, whatever. I mean, I've been busting my tail for weeks or months or years trying to make it happen. It's not working. Um, you're, you got to go to the right guy's house and you got paid a big fat check. Good for you. You got all the money now. You got the education. So it's so easy for you to say. Um, and or, um, yeah. I was, I'm at the job too. I didn't have the corporate job, but I've got a job and I fell the same way. I feel like I should do this, but there's no way in the world I can do what you've done. Um, what would you be able to say right now to that person who's listening, that guy, that gal, who's thinking that we're full of fruit trees or they're saying, yeah. how, do I, how do I do it? It's two different people. One's going to say, yeah, right. And the other one's going to say, please help. Well, how would you... What could you say to those, those people right now? 
Yeah, I think the biggest thing is making a decision because nothing happens until we make a decision. And I think that's the moment for me. You know, we can we can hum and haw and we can have all those moments that we're questioning ourselves. But when you make that decision, you know, and here's how I like to live my life. And I think this is how uh, I don't want to steal my values, but I think people should understand that we live this life once. And if you're not going to do it now, then when? Right. And the worst thing, and, and you and I, Matt, talked about this is that my wife works in the oncology ward and she talks about how people that leave this world always talk about what the stuff that they didn't do that they wish they would have done. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's, I would say that's the biggest thing is, and it's not hard once you make the decision because it's the decision that's the toughest part. Right. And so once you do it, you follow a path. Someone once told me that it's not the decision itself that leads you to success. It's a commitment after you make the decision. Mm. That's very true. And, and that's really what it came down to because there's times when, you know, my wife said to me, do you want to go back, you know, to the corporate really? world? And there's times when I thought maybe I should go back, but I didn't, I stuck to that decision. So anybody can do it. I've seen people do it. I've coached people through it. You can do this. Now I'm not saying go out there and actually just quit your job immediately, but put a <laughs> deep said, quit your job. I'm here to quit my job. <laughs> I'm, you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll be giving you a oh, crap.com. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A, a, a fake domain. That's what we're going to be giving at the end of this. Um, but do it because there's so many people that are doing what you're doing and, and it, it doesn't require that much. Yeah. You're going to have to learn new things. You're going to have to take some time out. You may have to sacrifice a few things, but just think about that point when you're a year down the road, you're two years down the road and you're actually on that path that you want to be on. How much better is your life going to be? How much happier is your life going to be? How, you know, if you have a significant other, just think about that. Because I think one of the biggest things for me, Matt, that made this decision was I want to look at my kid and say, I, I'm, I'm the person I want to be. I'm, I'm the dad that I want to be for you. And I just didn't feel that. So the most important thing I think that we can do as human beings, and I'm saying this directly to the listeners, is being true to who you believe. If you have that burning desire inside of you, if your heart is telling you that you can do more, that you want to do more, that you can have more, then you need to follow that because we get buried down in so much stress and so much anxiety and stress and all this stuff. Other people that are telling you, you can't do it. What are you thinking? You're crazy. But when you follow your heart, sometimes that just leads us in the right direction. And you'll be amazed. Even if you're not making millions of dollars, but you're just living a life where you're happier, that for me is the most important thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's not about, uh, you know, I, I've been to Grant Cardone stuff as well, and I've read his books, and not all of them, but some of them, and been to the 10X, which was great. Miami had a good time there. Um, but however, at the end of the day, I don't care about money that much. I'm not, okay. I'm not consumed with having to have money. Now, he would argue and say that he's not either, that he's about the lifestyle and everything. But at a certain point, when you've got more than you could ever spend in your lifetime, um, then it's about money because you just keep going for more and more and more. I, I yeah. would rather, I would be given as much of it away as I possibly could. Yeah. Uh, but so it's not about the money, but, but the, the freedom to be able to be a father and to be mm -hmm. a husband um, the way you would, when that's not bashing any father or husband that works a nine to five job till the day he dies uh, because that's an admiral thing, whatever you're doing. But some people are called to do different things. And, to be able to be that guy at home, like for me, I, I can't work a regular nine to five job anymore because of my cancer and my disease issues that I've had. And I can't, I can't hold a job like that. So um, it's really difficult for me. And uh, the joy to be able to, to live into coaching, consulting, speak what I do now is that I can spend time at home with my kids and my family, yeah. um, which is, which is phenomenal. I mean, I still got to deal with my body crap right now. Once that's over, that'll be even better. But uh, for right now, it's a, it's a great opportunity. So, so there you have, got it, folks. It's a, it's a great place to start with. One, it started with relationship for Pradeep. His, his moment, his okay. big aha moment came from a relationship, a conversation with somebody where he had his eyes opened up to an opportunity that he probably never even thought of as he was living the dream already. Um, it just wasn't that good of a dream, <laughs> yeah. right? But, uh, yeah. but he, he, you could have done well till the day you died working that kind of a job, but you took a big step. And, and then when you made your decision, you stuck to the decision and you said, this is it. 
come hell or high water, I'm in, all in, and you went all in, and you said, I'm done, I'm out, see you later, which is amazing. Not recommending everybody to walk in on day one and say, <laughs> I'm leave a 30-day notice from a former yeah. guy who used to own a business. It's always good to not leave people hanging. However, <laughs> uh, some places can handle it. But the uh, opportunity to be able to go in and to launch into what you're doing, and then you meet a guy who is a mentor and a hero to you and what you're learning and going through, you get to meet the guy. And now that guy you've been following, who has been at the front of what you're seeing, like, this is the guy, this is the celebrity that you have in your, in your life. And then all of a sudden, I want you, Pradeep, on my team. You want what? Yeah. And that's just amazing, which has opened up some great, great doors for you now uh, to do what you're doing. Um, all proof that it is totally, completely possible. Um, it is not just for, only for Pradeep. It's not only for Matt. It's not only for whoever. Um, it is for you to follow your dreams, to do whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be what we do. Uh, this can apply in any situation that you do, right, Pradeep? So yeah, uh, lastly, before we go, we're getting ready to, to, to end up here. So you talk to a lot of men and, uh, and focus on some of those things about um, uh, just being able to, to embrace things in life, right? To, to, to dig in that a little bit. Give me just about another minute's worth of that. What's that look like uh, to, to have you as their coach or a consultant or something like that in your life? Yeah, absolutely. So typically it's men in business, so business owners, professionals. Um, so basically they have two things. They want to really grow their business. So they want to scale so and to create the freedom that they want in their life, right? And so that's what I help them on the business strategies and tactics. But then there's an also another side because in order for them to be able to execute, they need to be at that level where they need to be. They need to be that go-getter leader. They need to be driven. They need to have that lead, those leadership skills. And that's what I help them with. And ultimately what that does is it helps them run their company and their business better, but also has them, they, they indirectly have a better relationship with their spouse and they're a better father as a result. So it's really a transformation. It's what I call the limitless transformation is they become the man that they want to be. So they're now they're thinking, they're feeling, they're acting like that guy that they dream of being. Mm. And ultimately as a byproduct, they have a better relationship. They're making more money. They're more successful as a father and as a member in the community. Um, and it just all around just changes their life. Oh, that sounds amazing. Where do I sign up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, simply, yeah. So uh, my website is purdeepsanga.com and you can check it out um, anytime and you can reach out to me directly because I'm more than happy to respond. I love responding and I, and I, I truly genuinely love helping people. Oh, that's fantastic. Is that the only place to reach you is the, is the website? And then of course, oh. I'm sure all your social media stuff, links are all there. Yeah. Uh, so you can go to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, find me at Purdeep Sanga. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Yeah. Do you, have you written anything? Do you have anything else or is it, are you? Yeah, just, yeah, I've written, I've written a couple of books. One of the things, uh, the books that I have is super fans. Um, and that's really about the concept of how do you take your average customer or client and turn them into raving super fans. So they refer, they, they love you. They stay loyal. They buy more, they pay more. Yeah. Um, and, which is really important business as you know, Matt. Right. Well, that's really good. It's good to have super fans. Yeah. <laughs> it helps you to be super boss. I mean, you have super yeah. Fans. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Pretty, for being here today. It has been an absolute blast. It's been so cool to hear your story and uh, to go from the, the Hot Wheels in the front yard to the Apple Orchard to <laughs> I'm going to be a CEO one day. <laughs> right? and, then, yeah. and then you are. And here you yeah. are, right? You get to live yeah. the dream. Love and life, live in the dream. There's nothing better than that. Absolutely. Folks, it's so possible. It's so possible. So there may be dark moments in your life. There may be times where you're experiencing difficulty, uh, trauma, uh, un unrest. It could be loneliness, desperation. Um, trying to think of some things that I even feel and felt. Um, despair, like there's, there's no hope for you. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lie. Total lie. Total lie. Don't believe the lie uh, because that's not what's there for you. Um, there's life for you. And life can be found in so, so many ways. Um, it doesn't have to be the models we're talking about here today. It could be your, your thing. Like, what is that? Uh, and I know if you want to contact Pradeep, he'll be happy to help you out uh, to discover what those, those things might be for you. And uh, of course, I can too. If you want to hook up with me, I'll be happy to do that. That's another, that's another show. So thanks so much for being here today. Don't give up. Don't ever forget that whenever you find those moments, there's always going to be a hope revealed.